Roman Empire terrorizes the landscape, forcing all the world's magic to seek refuge with the Maid of the Black Forest. But in order to control all the unwieldy energy, she had to bring it to the Dream Realm. I was the fiercest, finest soldier in the Empire, and my orders were to conquer the Black Forest and raise it to the ground. But before she took to her rest, the Maid believed in me. She believed I could be a force for good. In this age of magic versus machine, of empire versus free land, I choose to fight tyranny. I choose to be Ubermach, defender of the Black Forest. Tonight's episode, Across the Ten Dimensions. As you will soon discover, faithful listener, it is appropriate we began our tale several months back, where an impassioned explorer pleads before Caesar Worm to fund a most unorthodox expedition. Dear Tamarius, you are confident in your calculations and in the feasibility of such a vessel? Yes, Chancellor. I have worked the issue out as far as pen and ink will take it. It is time to build the great ship to rewrite all wars in the name of the Roman Empire. It certainly is ambitious, but of course, only one opinion matters. What say you, O great Caesar? Rubbish. What? It would appear Caesar has spoken. I, I do not understand. Surely a vessel such as this sparks the imagination of you. Caesar, our greatest of inventors. You who created Ubermach before the Black Forest corruption of him. You who, it is told, once created a machine that could steal prayers. Prayers are nothing but misguided energy. All energy can be harnessed. Your proposal is foolishness. But... Without the funding of the Empire, the ship will never be constructed, let alone take sail. Time travel is a branch that bears no fruit. How can you be so certain? It is a physical impossibility. Why, Caesar, because you command it? Oh, dear. (laughs) Because if such a thing were possible... You would have arrived from the future to convince me. I... I cannot reach the future without your funding. (laughs) Caesar, please. You are done, Tamarius. And I suggest you stop before you are finished. Still, although it pains me to ask, is there to be a reckoning for insolence? Send her on her way. To punish an idiot is cruel. As you wish, benevolent one. Later that day. Hail Caesar! Take Caesar and I to the Senate, driver. Yes, Chancellor. Is that my speech to the Senate you're so fascinated by, Chancellor? No, Caesar, it is the proposal from that idiot Tamarius. The library at Alexandria has an entire section devoted to quality humorists. Yes, well, I just find the notion of time travel rather fascinating. Tamarius describes it as a line. What is? Time itself. Time is a line, and theoretically... One should be able to visit any point on that line. Was my rebuke not clear earlier? Of course. Mm-hmm. Tamarius wants to acknowledge time as a straight line without acknowledging which direction that line is headed. If anything, time is a comet. The entire universe on its fiery head... And all that came before dissolves away behind us, the remnants of something once so bright. Tamarius theorizes that 
the line may ultimately, in fact, be a circle. <laughs> the amusement you provide is why I keep you. Move to that side of the carriage. Now return to the other side. There, you see? The genuine article cannot wholly occupy two spaces at once. Time is relative to experience, but it all moves forward. I suggest you do the same, Chancellor. <laughs> yes. You're listening to WLPNLP, Chicago, 105.5 FM, Lumpin' Radio. And now back to our show. But not even the direct command from the Caesar is enough to dissuade the curiosity of that scheming scarecrow once known as... That tattered man! Oh, here for a drink or just a gloat, Chancellor? Why, all that and more, Tamarius. Oh, then I'll be leaving. Oh, at least let me pay your bar tab. Is this amount sufficient? I'd love to buy the bar. Exploiting people's vices is always a sound investment. And your vice, my friend, is, as I've said, ambition. Well, Caesar believes it to be an empty quest, that nothing will come of it. There is no such thing as nothingness. <laughs> Did you enjoy the rest of my proposal as much as that particular quote? I'm here, aren't I? Granted. There is no precedent for such a power as time travel, but the knowledge I am secure in is that all great discoveries were made in the mad pursuit of something else. Give me the funds to build my ship and I will prove my thesis. I will travel back in time and conquer the ancient peoples who first inhabited the Black Forest, and I will erase that cankerous land from history. All glory to the Empire! You may plant your flag wherever you wish, if and when you get there. But until then, you work for me, and you work in secret. Do you not serve Rome, tattered man? Oh, of course, but this is beyond risk. If your exploration fails, Rome fails, and surely you don't wish for that. No, no. But how do you intend to keep such an expense secret? You understand time travel, but not multiple ledgers? <laughs> oh, are you naive enough to believe that the government actually spends 200 lira for a single hammer, or a thousand for a commode? Creative accounting for covert investments, Tamarius. Now, let's raise our steins to ours. Over the course of many months, Tamarius honors her debt, constructing not one, but two single passenger vessels, one for expedition and the other for, if need be, rescue. Finally, Tamarius and the Chancellor stand with the vessels at the edge of the Black Forest awaiting the maiden flight. The solar batteries are charged, Chancellor. The modification you requested has been checked and loaded. Good. All that remains is action. Then, for the glory of Rome, Tamarius. If I do not find glory in this vessel, it will surely deliver me to another. The, the vessel's trembling at such speed. I can, I can see clear through it. It's, it's rising. It, it hangs in the air. It... Oh, dear. <laughs> Within the Black Forest, Ubermach samples the rewards of his hops harvest. Ah, this might be the best brew yet. And to think that used to be witch's work. I'm sure you stirred up a fine batch in your time. None like this. <laughs> Such pride. <laughs> You're lucky, Lon, that I happen to be indisposed. Myself and the rest of the world are lucky for that. Another harvest come and gone. Strange. Is it? This cycle of existence. 
Is this when the home brew makes you start philosophizing? Observing, Crone. Observing. <laughs> ah. Doesn't... Uh, I don't know. Life is the constant pursuit of energy at the expense of energy. Strange is all. Are you making a compost pile? With my words? I was referring to the spent hops, but now that you mention it... <laughs> Everything a cycle. Crone, tell me. When I harvested these plants, did they feel pain? They're living things, aren't they? But do they have souls? You! Lon, control yourself. If he came with bad intentions, the magic would not have let him enter the forest. Define bad intentions. I intend to. <laughs> Shall I? Do you sense that? What a curious energy. What trials have you brought to our door this... You're wearing the livery collar. Oh, it has been a while since we filled our steins with your homebrew and swapped stories, hasn't it? If Verm has made you Chancellor, he's become just as mad as the Caesar he usurped. For someone who eats the dead, he can be quite reasonable. Consider the tragic case of Tamarius, who so yearned to create a vessel to travel through time upon. Great Caesar, who you call mad, banished the poor inventor from the palace. Rather than heed our great leader's warning, Tamarius... Is in great pain, Lon. Take this scarecrow to the edge of the forest. Gladly. Please, friend, not so... <laughs> fast! Oh. Do you see her? I see her. The energy that's being emitted is familiar, but almost a pure kind of it. Pure? Crone, this is a prison. Tamarius is in her vessel, but it is at a fixed point in the sky, and from every direction I can see through this ghostly image. She's alive, but without dimension. She sees me. She's fading. She's gone. No! No, she's not gone. No, Tamarius, my love, I'm I'm powering up the rescue pod. Get out of that machine. You'll face the same fate. If you won't save her, then I will. Get out of there. Lon, no, it's a trap. What? <coughs> <laughs> I may have uh, modified the rescue pod to release a little nerve toxin. <laughs> All it takes, this talk of the past, Ubermark, I prefer progress. Lon! Lon! Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me in your primeval wooden cage, witch? Your poor Ubermark is now just a shadow of the man he used to be. And in a few moments, he won't even be that. Oh, blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be. We'll be right back with more Ubermark, Defender of the Black Forest, right after these messages. Ah! I finally captured the Chrome computer! Calling Ubermark! We've got trouble. Nothing I can handle. Bring home the adventure and excitement of your favorite hero with Ubermark, defender of the Black Forest action figures. Ubermark, Verm, Ubergirl, and the new voice-activated Crone Computer Playlist. Each sold separately, only from... We now return to Ubermark, defender of the Black Forest. <laughs> <laughs> Crone, I'm... I'm okay. Don't know where I am, but I'm okay. Crone? Great. Suit, start recording, and periodically transmit this message until you link with the home computer. Crone, I'm alive, and I've somehow lost contact with you, yet I still have the powers the harness gives me. Which makes no sense because your magic is the source of those powers. Which means you're somewhere nearby. Which means hope is not completely lost. Just temporarily. 
There's no sign of Temerius or her vessel. The rescue pod allegedly was set to arrive at the exact same coordinates. Not that we've been lied to before. Odd. I went to step left, but the suit is nudging me right. Hopefully it's you that I'm being drawn to. Roomish. Or not. End message. Begin translation. Have you come without your legion to slaughter our women and children? Have it me first. You look like you've endured enough battle for today, friend. There will never be enough battle to sate the men of Abnoba Mons. Yes. You're unusually quick. You'll also that. find I'm unusually strong if you insist on this foolishness. I come in peace. And you leave in pieces. Oof. <laughs> I will find my strength. I will find my strength. Add to message. Encounter with hostile native. The Abnobamans? Some sort of survivalist clad almost entirely in pelts. He's retreating now to the arms of his woman. The other women and, and the children and, and the old, they're all seated up on the hillside watching as the men in the tribe battle. Oh, blessed be. The sigil on the enemy flag belongs to the Roman Empire of thousands of years ago. Crone, help me. I'm in the past. Pray to your devil gods. I have all the strength I need in Orenia. <laughs> Give me strength, my goddess. Fight for me, Anthem, for no one else can. Defend your wife from these Roman beasts, or they will enslave me. No. Yes, as they seek to make slaves of you. Enslavement would be my torture, but your enslavement would be my hell. Then pick up your sword and charge again into battle. These people are insane. Anthonym, you're injured. Stay down. You are not my master. I told you I am your friend. You are a Roman. <laughs> you're injured. I will fight in your stead. Whoosh! Oh, my God. Look, he hovers above the battlefield. Now we see who the Roman eagle truly favors. He's reaching for their flag and tears it in half. The enemy retreats. Oh, Anthem, even their gods betray them. The day is won, Orinia. We are free. You are, my love. You are. By nightfall, the dead have been buried, and the ale has been drunk. Orinia gazes upon the stars. I was hoping to be alone. And I was hoping that I would talk with you throughout this entire evening. What is there to say? Ancient stories have been passed down how Hercules and Ulysses fought alongside our tribe. Yes, I have heard some of those stories tonight. And now they'll be telling such stories about Ubermach. <laughs> My husband's body was not even cold, and they had already elected you their new king. I turned them down. How noble. I suggested you to be their leader. <laughs> Your husband worshipped you as a god. Husbands do here. You Romans describe it as a local custom. Well, with you, I think there's a bit more to it than that. From the moment I arrived at this place, I've been drawn to something, and I realize now. As it's I you. said, my husband's body is not even cold. Please, if you could just. Unhand me! Lon? Oh. A, a, a voice just spoke from that symbol on your chest. You heard that? Crone, I'm alive! Crone! Orinia, please, give me your hand. Crone, my god, my source of strength, cannot speak to me unless it's through you. And then take my hand. Thank you. Ah! Oh! Lon, help! She needs me. Why are you fighting me? This is a trick. There is no trick. Take my hand and, and see. You don't learn. The blight is attacking. Ah! Oh! Please, our free land is under siege. What is the blight? It's what we call the Roman Empire. Please, help us. Give me your hand. Women of the Abnomamans don't fight. You could have fooled me. Our people fear enslavement. Local custom. 
but only, only Anthem had ever been enslaved as a boy to some fat and depraved Roman governor. <laughs> Drunks may make bad jailers. He was haunted by those years and wanted to prepare me just in case there would ever come a day he wasn't here to defend me. I told your husband I would fight in his stead. I'm telling you, I won't betray you. Take my hand. Lot, the Datter Man must have told Worm you vanished. Nearly the entire Roman army is at the edge of the Black Forest. Ah! Crone! They can't contain all the magic and still defend the forest. This is why I needed you. Then how can I get there? You can't. I'm sorry, Lon. You're trapped, and I can't save you. Uh, the time is fixed. Once something is done, it cannot be undone. Then how can I be back here? You did go back in time, but your presence immediately created an anomaly, an infection. Something that needed to be gathered up and taken away. Ah! You're standing in a shadow land. It's a false dimension. But I'm here. I'm in this reality. The minute you disappeared, I consulted all the grimoires. The very act of observing a dimension, let alone visiting it, changes that dimension. You are now living on the other side of the mirror. And what happens to the image in the mirror once you stop observing it? It disappears. Forever. Even if you just look away for a second, that existence is gone. The world you're living in does not exist past what you've already seen. And yes, you can fly around the world and everything you see, these shadow remnants of the world at that time, they'll all be made real. But the minute you close your eyes to sleep, Lon, the minute you break consciousness, that dimension and all that inhabit it will cease to be... Ah! All of the magic in the world, and, and, we can't save these I people. I don't care about them. They're alive, because I look at them, they're alive. We've got to save them. We can't. Uh, not even with all the magic in the world. I'm losing, Lon. I'm losing control. What about all the magic in this world? It, it, it all just has to die? How can I hear that voice? I am Orinia. Orinia? Of the Abnoma Mons. Abnoma Mons? The Forest Mount? That's the ancient name of the Black Forest. No wonder the harness didn't lose its power. Lon, give Orinia your harness. If I remove it, I won't be able to hear you. If you don't remove it, you'll never come home. We can save you. We can save everyone. What do I have to do? Orinia, you heard what I had to say then. The only places and things that exist in your world are your people and their land. And the Romans who retreated. A sight I'm looking forward to. Uh, in my land. I'm wearing your symbol. Good. What is it doing? My, my blood is a fire. The Aridia of our world was a goddess. That's why the harness was being drawn to you. Summon the magic from your world. Summon the strength from your forest. Uh, how? Ask it. Come to me, my children. Gather up all your living things and follow my voice home. Yes, sister. I do not understand, O oh great Caesar. Ubermark is gone. Yet for all of our army's firepower, we've barely moved the Black Forest's force field back a yard. A yard is a considerable achievement, as I anticipated. Without Ubermark to act as her avatar, the maid's power has become untenable. It's only a matter of... <coughs> what is that? That was the sound that devoured Ubermark. You told me you watched him die. He... he became a ghost before my very eyes. And before my very eyes he materializes, riding a floating forest containing a Celtic army and a... An uber -mansion. Warriors of the Abnoma Mons, it appears we arrived in our new home to find old problems. Caesar, let us retreat until we can gather more intelligence about this, this new enemy. I will have your head for this, Chancellor, whichever one you will. Anthem is dead. I am your leader now. And to you, I say, attack! <laughs> You 
been listening to Ubermark, defender of the Black Forest.